Hey everybody, welcome back to Data Retro Tech. I have a special episode. Now this one's not going to have a lot of fancy editing and cool special effects. What we're going to do today is hopefully a little bit more technical and helpful to you in case you want to make a capacitor kit. And this could be to service a special CRT to you, or maybe you got one of the cap lists from um, a resource where you wanted to build your own cap kit and just make one from a list that's already compiled or maybe you found a part list in the back of a service manual. But today I want to show you how I do this, and this is just how me personally I do this. And um, I've, I get a lot of questions about cap kits, obviously working in these old CRTs. And personally, I do not offer cap kits specifically because it's very difficult to predict the availability of parts, even in capacitors. So most of the time I have to go in and periodically just order from scratch a new cap kit list. And today I'm working on a 14 N6U cap list here for a PVM and it's a Sony PVM. So what I'd like to do is just show you how, again, I do this and hopefully this will help you uh, ordering capacitors. So we're just gonna go through this. And what I'd like to show you is uh, a website that I used to order parts from called mauser.com. There are plenty of other websites you can use, but definitely use something that is good in the region that you live in and delivers uh, reliably and has reliable stock. So that's something always to consider. There are other companies and this is just one I've worked with for a long time. Now, when I come up here, there is a keyword search bar at the top. And what I like to do is kind of narrow that search down a little bit and just type in aluminum electrolytic capacitors into that search bar. And then it will pull up Mauser's handy search tool engine here and you can see that they have over 90,000 listed capacitors here that meet that specific uh, requirement. Now there are some things we're going to do to narrow that list down and I'm going to show you how to do that right now. And one of the important things we need to do is obviously we've got our statistics here written. Uh, I've handwritten this list and developed this kit so these show the voltage and then the microfarads uh, for the actual capacitance of the capacitor. And if you look here on this handy sheet, uh, we've got a lot of things we can choose from for filters that should help us pull this, these capacitors up pretty quickly. First off on the left, we've got manufacturer, and then we've got products, termination style, capacitance voltage, uh, diameter, length, ESR, and life. And those are pretty much everything that we need to know about our capacitor. Now, one thing that you will not know about your capacitors just based on uh, servicing an old machine most likely is your ESR. You will not uh, know that. You can get the voltage rating and the capacitance off the sides of the capacitor itself, as well as the temperature rating, which is another thing we will really consider uh, when we're ordering. So what I like to do is I like to narrow this list down first off. Under product, I select general purpose electrolytic capacitor. We're going to start with general purpose and radial because every single one of them that I'm going to be ordering today is going to be from those two lists. Now, our first capacitor on the list is a 160 volt by 33 microfarad big capacitor that has come out of the uh, deflection block on the monitor, and it is actually one that we'll find a bunch of different sizes for. So it's a good example of one we can hopefully match up here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go with first the voltage rating, which on this is 160 volts DC. And then our capacitance, we'll scroll down here and we're looking for 33. And so we've selected all those. Now our next thing is to do, I'd like to go down here and click in stock. And then let's just go ahead and apply some filters and see what we have remaining. It says we have 19 remaining, so we can see kind of what our choices are. Now, we've narrowed this down some, and we do have some choices. So the first thing I want to do is I want to select, I don't want to have anything that's 85 degrees Celsius. And 125 is kind of probably overkill, so we don't want to worry about that either. But let's apply that filter, and it looks like we have 13 still remaining. And let's see what, we, what other uh, things we can do. We can also pick between our brands here. So if we want to go with a Nishikon and replace a Nishikon with a Nishikon, that's what we have originally in this kit is a Nishikon or from the board. So let's just apply the filters on there in stock and it should give us 
Yes, we have seven choices here of Nishikans, and you can tell where they'll all be different sizes, and we're going to need one that does have a larger size than the other ones. So really, our only choices is a five millimeter spacing and then a seven and a half millimeter spacing. So I'm going to go with the seven and a half millimeter spacing and I'm sure it will work. Let's see what we've got left here. That'll only give us one capacitor right here. So we're going to go with adding this to the sheet because it's got a bigger lead space and look at our life. It'll tell us right here, 10,000 hours with a 20% tolerance and it does give us a ripple current rating, but we don't really know what the ripple current rating is of the one we're actually pulling out of it. So hopefully um, most of the time that should be fine. And these are within a tolerance, but if you do have, that's a good reason to keep the old capacitor. If you have an issue with the new one, and it has a ripple current thing then you may need to consider that and so we're going to add one of these to our kit and what you want to see here is oh my goodness well so see this is what we've got to work with you see how there's only five that can ship immediately the problem with me just ordering one of these is since i'm a small customer these five could already be ordered and even though it says they're here this could mess up the whole kit so i need to find something with some more stock because that one will not be restocked for a whole year. See how it says restock expectancy then. So that's going to take us back where we need to go back. And this is a good example of what you have to work through. Let's try and see what Panasonic has to offer, if anything. We have four capacitors. We don't have lead spacing listed on here. Let's see if that apply filter. And yeah, I'm not seeing the lead spacing on here, but let's see what we do have to choose from on these. They are a little bit more stocked lead spacing. They're all five millimeter. So this time, this is the kind of, this is what you have to do is kind of make a compromise on these things. Now the size of the lead spacing, I know that this is probably going to disturb some people who are really into, you know, engineering and, and the exact specifications on the size of here, but you can alter the size spacing um, to fit as long as it doesn't, the, the actual legs aren't going to ground out to anything on the chassis or another component. And you can safely do that. I've had to do that with other capacitors in the past. And this one looks like we're going to be in the same boat because we're going to be stuck with a five millimeter lead spacing that's only really going to be the uh, in stock option and so we have different options here for life expectancy we probably want to go with this AEC Q200 and the reason I want to pick this one is it's 85 cents but if I look over here the life tolerance is the highest or the life expectancy is the highest now it does have a higher ripple current uh, but that's you know that's what your trade-off is you want a lower ripple current and lower hours or this. This should not be a problem though. So we're gonna try and add this particular capacitor to our kit and we'll just sit there and buy one. That's how many is in this list. And that will go into a shopping cart and I'll show you my shopping cart real quick so you can see how it just has the one part there. And then uh, what I like to do is I'll save a new project here, but we'll do that once we get this whole kit built. So let's go back now to this and we'll just go back and hit the back button a couple screens so we can get to the major list here where it shows pretty much everything and again we're going to have general purpose radial and now we're going to select our next capacitor which is a 160 volt 10 microfarad capacitor and this is just the way you work through this i've got 160 volts selected there let's go down here and see if we can find that 10 10 and then apply filters and just based on what I've selected already it's narrowed it down to 11 capacitors um, this one is not as particular on the size it's just a general size capacitor and five millimeters should be plenty of spacing so we've got a five millimeter spacing available and a three and a half millimeter spacing available and that's really um, all that we've got available on this one and so if we go down here 
and it will tell us on the left what brands we have to choose from. It looks like we only got United Chemicon and Nishikon. So let's go ahead and we'll use Nishikon again since we know everybody knows Nishikon. Although United Chemicon is a good company also. This one does have 400, almost 500 in stock. 10 capacitance, 10 microfarads, 160 volt DC, 105 volt temperature. Um, now this one only has a thousand hours of life, which is something to consider. However, that is at the high 105 degree temperature, so that's quite a bit higher than if it were um, on there. But let's look at some others and see if there's any other availability that might have a higher life set, life expectancy. We scroll over here and see what it says for the life expectancy rating. And this one down here is a 10,000 hour capacitance uh, and we have 8,000. Let's see what we've got as far as availability. Uh, this is low stock, low stock. This one right here is a funky size. And this one right here is the highest capacitance and it is five millimeters. Okay, so let's try this one. Let's go ahead and we're gonna have just one of these in our cap kit also so we'll add that by we've got two items in there and we're going to continue shopping and this is kind of the process again and we're just going to roll through here and uh, once i get the rest of this cap kit you know put together and then i'm going to come right back after this break all right welcome back i've got my list compiled i've got all the parts ordered and double checked and i wanted to show you first my shopping cart right here so let's look at that and you can uh, see how it gives you some options here to print the page, share, export, whatever. But what we want to do is just count the capacitors. Now it does list down here 12 items, but we've got um, multiples on some of these. One, two, three. So that's 15 plus three more, 18. And that's how many we've got. I did add two more capacitors from the neck board onto my list. So that's a total of 18 capacitors for this kit, which that's kind of standard for most products. You could have more, maybe 30, or even down to as many as, you know, as little as one or two if you're just looking for a specific repair and only doing one part. Now, what's obviously the um, great uh, thing about doing this yourself? Well, you're going to learn how to make these lists, number one. Number two, you could save a lot of money just by doing these cap kits on your own, for example. The cost on this one, even with the shipping, is going to be $17.43, and then I'll have a little bit of taxes thrown on top of that. But for less than $20, you can get this full cap kit shipped to you. Uh, but again, I cannot reiterate, when you do this, uh, first off, you want to double check again that you're getting all your products, you've got everything that you want, and uh, double check on here the description that it matches what you need. And what you want to do is also say, double check your availability right here where it says ships now ships now ships now if it's back ordered and you accidentally got one that just went out of stock it will tell you right then that it's out of order or it's back ordered now what i want to do here is i'm going to make this into a list that i can save that way if i want to come back and review it uh, or compare it or share it with anybody you have to make an account for these kind of things but once you make your account on the website, which you can just go to their accounts page and make that, it'll give you this option to do this kind of thing. You can see I've got a lot of kits in here that I've worked on for years. I mean, there's so many I've redone and things like that. So what I'm gonna do is new project, enter the name, and I'm gonna go PVM 14N6U kit. So we'll save it. And now, that kit is saved into my memory and if I come back and and or if I don't want to order this right now I can go back and I can share that kit or I can reopen that kit and just hit order and it'll immediately process the order of this the only problem with sharing and saving these old kits is like I said a lot of these products you can see where they could easily go out of stock and with the way getting stock is now for any parts even capacitors like this it's so difficult these sharing these order sheets is almost unfortunately worthless besides uh, just as a guide kind of so that's why i don't share these lists usually but this is how you make your own and um so now we've got this done we've got this in our shopping cart and everything's ready to go and again all we'd have to do here is complete our options for shipping and checkout 
And then that's really it. That's all that you need to do. Now, again, the good thing about working through, you know, Mauser or um, DigiKey or any of these websites is you can go in and practice. You can make these cap kits and just practice and say, you know, here's the caps that I recorded from my device. It's, it could be a CRT, it could be a gaming console, it could be really anything. And as long as uh, you record the, the important stuff here, and then again, if you, if you pull one and you're worried about the size, pull it out and you can measure it. But again, you might be stuck with something where you can only get a certain size like we were today on the capacitance for that capacitor. We don't want to just not replace it because we can't find a perfect size match. So um, sometimes you do have to, you know, give or take a little bit and just watch that uh, sizes if you need to, you know, pay attention to that. Because a lot of these, when you get into these general purpose capacitance and capacitors, they're all going to be that five millimeter size around that for the most part. And um, but it does list that for you. So uh, uh, just to review some of the things you definitely want to make sure you got. Obviously, you want to make sure you've got the right voltage and capacitance and then you want to make sure that you have the right termination style so that means is it does it have a negative and a positive end on it and most of them do but the, that's a general purpose capacitor all these did but if you have a bipolar one you can go in here and select where you need a bipolar um, you need a bipolar capacitor so let's just i'll show you that example see how it says on the product type right here in the middle of the page there's bipolar nonpolar electrolytic capacitors that's how you find one of those if you need to replace it because there are those occasionally in these old devices where they're just um everything looks like a positive there is no marking for a negative because there's no negative end on the capacitor and it doesn't matter which way you install those because they're the same polarity on either side but that is something that you definitely want to know on there so taking into consideration those tips, the size, and then also always try to increase the uh, temperature tolerance if possible. I try to always go with a 105 degrees Celsius, but do not be like hung up on the brand. If you can find a brand like we did today where, again, I've got a mix of Panasonic, Rubicon, Nishicon, and Worth Electronics. A lot of you probably haven't heard of them, but... Um, they're another good brand. Uh, we've also got plenty of other brands here that are available like United Chemicon, uh, Cornell Doubler, and um, Kemet. I mean, there's a, a number of good quality capacitors right now. And again, with stock issues, we're just going to have to deal with uh, whatever we can really get at this point. But that's going to be it for today's video. I know the format was a little bit different and a little bit more technical, so... Uh, I don't really know how this is going to do it for views and everything, but if you enjoyed it, please let me know. Um, if you think that you have any questions about it, leave them below and me or somebody else in the community can try to help you out with an answer. And just remember it doesn't, you know, there's no harm in just practicing building these sheets out. And even if you found somebody that was a friend of yours that knows how to do this a little bit better and you say, Hey, I'm learning. Can you mind reviewing my cap kit list for me? Here's a link to it. Tell me what you think. And, um, you know, your friends, I'm sure they'll help you out and be glad to uh, review your cap kit for you. Uh, but you can do this, save money and learn more and more and more and more about these electronics as we go, which is always great. So um, again, thanks for watching today. I will see you all next time with some more retro content.